We will talk about most deficient minerals and first and most common is iron. Iron deficiency is very prevalent. Iron is required for synthesized hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is required to carry oxygen throughout the body. So when we have iron deficient and iron deficiency, we have iron deficiency anemia. And what is manifestation of anemia? Manifestation usually is fatigue, muscle weakness, dizziness, and pale mucous membranes. You can easily check if person's mucous membranes, especially inner layer of eyelid, it should be normally pink. And if it's pale, it can be anemia. And most common form anemia is iron deficiency anemia. And for diagnosed iron deficiency anemia, we need hemoglobin level, we need um, ferritin level. When ferritin level is low, it means that person has iron deficiency. Now let's say which foods contain iron. We have two types of iron. One is conjugated with protein and it is called hemi-iron and non-hemi-iron. Hemi-iron is better. Hemi-iron is absorbed around 30%. What you intake, you absorb around 30%. It's hemi-iron. If uh, iron is without hemi, without this protein, it means that its absorption is inhibited. And only around 2% of such iron, sometimes more, sometimes less, uh, you can absorb from such sources. Hemi irons or good iron sources are meat, poultry, fish, sea products also. And non-hemi iron sources are uh, beans, soybean, nuts, spinach, chia. Uh, so you can intake iron from them, but absorption is very low. That's the idea. Of course, you can intake supplements and usually supplements are prescribed around 60 to 120 milligrams per day but um, in normal cases adult men adult male requires around 8 milligram uh, iron per day and adult reproductive age women require 18 milligram per day now let's say what is second most common deficient um, mineral is magnesium. Magnesium is very important mineral. It's participating more than 300 reactions. So it's very important for our body. And let's state what is most important among them. First and most important uh, function of magnesium is stabilizing ATP and ATP is main energy sources for our cell and it stabilizes uh, ATP that's why it's important for energy transfer also magnesium is very important for muscle relaxation because magnesium is natural antagonist of calcium uh, and calcium causes contraction of muscles and magnesium causes relaxation of muscles so, <clears throat> so when person has magnesium deficiency he can have muscle cramps because it's difficult to relax these muscles also magnesium um, participating in nerve impulse transmission and neurotransmission neurotransmitter release also that's why what symptoms we have when we have magnesium deficiency <clears throat> we have muscle cramps muscle weakness because uh, lots of calcium trying to uh, contract these muscles all time and we have resulted muscle weakness. We have depression because it affects uh, neurotransmitter formation and release and tingling and numbness because, we, uh, because magnesium participating in nerve impulse transmission also. Now let's say what is natural sources of magnesium and which foods are high in magnesium. They are pumpkin seeds, chia seeds, almonds, spinach, peanuts, soybean. 
such uh, and beans generally uh, such foods are high in magnesium and you can intake them actively because magnesium deficiency is very common among general population another common mineral which deficiency are, is common is zinc uh, zinc is important for wound healing dna synthesis and cell division so for immune system it's very important and zinc deficiency is also common that's why such people have weakened immune system hair loss diarrhea delayed wound healing zinc uh, intake is also possible with uh, supplements also um, also nuts contain lots of zinc uh, another important uh, mineral is iodine also but iodine deficiency nowadays is rare only specific places but in most countries when you eating salt uh, the salt is iodized so iodine deficiency is not common nowadays and calcium deficiency is very common also but calcium deficiency usually is due to vitamin D deficiency so you may intake enough uh, amount of calcium but if you don't have enough amount of vitamin D you can still have calcium deficiency so vitamin D is important in this case and vitamin D supplementation or vitamin D containing food is solution at this case so to summarize first and most important is iron but with iron you should be very careful don't overdose it because you know, excessive iron can cause hemochromatosis it's disease it damages different types of internal organs also if you intake excessive irons you increase oxidative stress in your body because you know, iron causes oxidative stress and it damages cells and it damages dna of the cells that's why you should be very careful with iron don't intake too much iron because it's much better that you have uh, low on low range of uh, on low level of a uh, normal range of iron uh, rather than excessive iron excessive iron is much worse than uh, low level i don't mean uh, very low level but if your iron level is near normal it's better than excessive so uh, with iron you should be very careful magnesium is another important mineral and zinc is important and iodine now but nowadays iodine is not problem and calcium also important because of vitamin d that's all i wanted to say thank you for your interest thank you for your watching if you like my videos, please thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. Thank you very much. Bye for now.